people are feeding their children upon haram. They are feeding their families upon haram. They are buying their homes upon haram. They are building their masjids upon haram. They are building their madrasas upon haram. Through drug money, through alcohol money, through cheating and gambling. And then they think, I will give it to charity and Allah will forgive me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ طَيِّبٌ لَا يَقْبَلُ إِلَّا طَيِّبًا Allah is pure and He only accepts pure. Camouflage it with whatever you want. You meet some people, you ask them, what are you doing? I have X amount of businesses. You think, how did you become a business person? You didn't graduate from your GCSEs or your A-levels or your degree. You didn't have a job all your life. And suddenly you have so many businesses. And then you realize that this person has cleaned up his drug money through businesses. And now has become religious and become a business person who gives thousands to the masjid. All of it is haram. Allah will not accept a penny of it. Allah will not accept a single dua that was made because that money was given to the masjid. Allah said, وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ إِسْلَاحِهَا And don't corrupt in the earth after it has been rectified. وَدْعُوهُ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا And call upon him. Number one, in fear. Make dua to Allah in fear that perhaps this dua will be thrown back in my face. Perhaps this money that I'm putting in the masjid, Allah will throw back in my face. Perhaps what I am feeding my children, Allah will question me and say, you fed these innocent children upon haram. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and a body that was fed with haram, فَالنَّارُ awla bih." The fire has greater preference over that. I.e. paradise has no place for it. Fire has greater preference that that body be burnt in the fire of hell because it was nurtured through haram. This is our religion. It's serious. If Allah has given us to eat and drink, we should thank Him and stop at that. If we open up our eyes into matters of haram and bring into haram into our families, we can't deceive Allah. We might grow a beard and cheat people that I've become haji sahab and religious now. But was that hajj done upon halal? Was that earned through halal? A man, he went to Makkah, he was a righteous man. He went for hajj. He didn't say, labbaik Allahumma labbaik once. The people asked him, why don't you say, labbaik Allahumma labbaik? He said, I fear if I say to Allah, here I am, I fear Allah might say to me, go away, I don't need you. Why? Because I fear that even if one penny of what I bought for hajj was haram, Allah will not accept my hajj. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave everybody a responsibility. If you are living in a house and you know haram is being bought into that house, then remember, your children will not drop into your grave. They will not answer your questions. They will not stand up for you. If you keep them with you in this world, be sure they won't keep you in the next world. They might take you the way they go and the direction they go in. That man who worshipped Allah for 500 years, punishment came to him first. Why? Because the color of his face did not change when he knew in his community haram was going on, wrong was going on, people were selling drugs, people were gambling, people were building their homes, their mansions, their masjids upon haram, but nothing changed in him. Allah said, punish him first. Which means that our, punish, our worship will not prevent Allah's punishment until we stop engaging in haram. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes what we put in the masjid and what we feed our children, that He makes us understand if it's not halal, don't put it in the masjid. 
If it's not halal, don't feed your children. Make tawbah, turn back to Allah, and think of the innocence of these children and these communities.